Hello, this is Renata Martinez with Think Reliability, and today I wanted to talk about facilitation tip number one, and that's to slow down. So we want to encourage you to take smaller steps during your analysis in order to reveal additional causes. And what that does is gives you two benefits. First, it makes the incident more clear to the unfamiliar reader. So by explaining it in, in detail, you might be helping someone that wasn't a part of your investigation team understand that discussion and what happened. Additionally, it's going to, to reveal additional causes that might not have been identified or visually laid out before. And by diagramming these extra causes, we have the opportunity to identify additional possible solutions. So looking at this with a, uh, say for instance, a risk of viral infection, if you're talking to one person, that individual's perspective might be, well, that's, you have a risk of viral infection because a hand contacts the contaminated surface. So while that is absolutely true and accurate, it's just not very thorough. So what we want to do is we want to reveal additional causes between those two initially identified causes. And we do this with asking the how question. So how will help your map expand linearly and reveal those additional causes? So you, you might say, well, how does the hand contacting the contaminated surface lead to a risk of viral infection? And one might explain, well, that's because the infectable virus will get on the hand. How does the infectable virus on the hand increase your risk of viral infection? Again, one might explain, well, the infectable virus on the hand then contacts the face, and that allows the virus to enter the body through the eyes, nose, or mouth, ultimately increasing the risk of viral infection. So that's building out your map linearly, and then you can ask the question, well, what else is required? So if we look at the infectable virus on the hand contacting the face, because we have the infectable, infectable virus on the hand, well, what else is required for the infectable virus on the hand to contact the face? So you have to have the hand touching the bare or unprotected face. Again, this seems extremely obvious, but by breaking it out vertically with these and relationships, we can then identify solutions on either one of these cause branches, and that will mitigate our risk of viral infection. So if we're looking at the top branch, the infectable virus is on the hand. We have the hand contacting the contaminated surface, but additionally, the virus has to be able to survive on that hand, and this would get into the, the hand washing techniques. If we look at the bottom branch, we'll start to understand our habits. Why are we touching our face? Why is our face unprotected? So it just gives us additional opportunity. So looking at a 2Y, our solutions might have been, well, don't contact contaminated surfaces but by revealing additional detail, we can understand that there are op also opportunities in improving our hand washing techniques, maybe recognizing and trying to mitigate touching our faces, as well as protecting our face with items such as a face mask. I hope that provides a little bit more clarity to facilitation tip number one. This example, as well as a PDF outlining this tip, is maybe found on our website. Thank you.